Hello, I'm Jim Salisbury with Mitutoya America Corporation, and welcome to the Metrology Training Lab. In this episode, we're going to talk about the accuracy and calibration of mechanical outside micrometers. In a past episode, we've covered general calibration concepts and specifically discussed the calibration of outside micrometers. However, we used a digital micrometer for all those examples, and some people have been asking about mechanical mics. In particular, I want to discuss mechanical mics with no vernier scale. First, let's be clear about some of the differences in the products. This is the most common mic you'll generally see. The digital model allows you to easily measure in either inches or metric, and the physical design of this model is in inches, and the analog scale that's on here on the thimble and the sleeve can optionally be used. The intent is to use the digital readout, which most people do, but on some of the newer models, like this faster quantum mic, you can only use the digital readout. As you can see on this model, the analog scale is not designed to be used for measurement. Now the traditional micrometer, which has been around for over a hundred years, offers the option of a vernier scale. In inches, the graduation and the thimble are in thousandths of an inch. As you see here on this one, there is no vernier scale and it shows that the least count or the scale interval or graduation is a thousandths of an inch. On this one, it has the vernier scale and you can see it goes to a least count to a ten thousandths. The metric micrometer is similar with graduations of 10 microns on the thimble and one micron with the vernier. The specified accuracy of all these micrometers is about the same. In particular, on the mechanical micrometers, whether or not there is a vernier, the accuracy is plus or minus one ten thousandths of an inch or plus or minus two microns. Let me repeat that. On this tool right here, with a graduation of a thousandth of an inch, this very common mechanical micrometer has an accuracy of one-tenth of that. One-tenth of the one thousandth scale graduation on the unit. Is that right? Now for digital instruments, you can make a general statement that the accuracy can never be smaller than the resolution. You can't measure more accurately than the smallest deviation the instrument can see. So what's with this mechanical mic? Are we saying that you can read between the lines to a tenth of a graduation? Is that right? Let me read you something. Now I've been able to find many answers to some of these perplexing problems by digging into the history. And I like metrology history. So I was reading an old US military standard on gauge inspection called the Mill Standard 120, which was published back in 1950, back before digital tools were commonly used. And I wanna share a sentence from that standard. So here it is. You ready? It says the following. I'm just reading exactly what the standard says from 1950. Most micrometer calipers, so that's what these were called back in 1950, micrometer calipers. That name has kind of disappeared from use these days. All right, let me continue. Most micrometer calipers are graduated to read to thousandths of an inch. All right, well that hasn't changed in a century. 
a thousandth of an inch is the graduations on the thimble. All right, let me finish. Most micrometer calipers are graduated to read to thousandths of an inch and may be read to ten thousandths by estimating tenths of the thimble graduation. So there you have it. According to best practice in the US military in 1950, a practice which is still used in industry today, an outside micrometer with a thousandths graduation, go ahead and subdivide. Go ahead and read that graduation into tenths. Now, I think you need pretty good eyes to see this. And if you question yourself, it's not too hard to run a test to see how good you are. Let me show you how. Okay, we have the two mechanical mics here, both in inches, one with the vernier that reads to a tenth, and one here without the vernier that reads to a thousandth of an inch. Again, the only difference between these two mics is the vernier scale. And what we're saying is that we should be able to read this micrometer to a tenth as well by reading between the lines. Now we can use the one with the vernier to see how well we can do that. So what we're going to do is just spin the thimble here and put it in any position that we want and then lock this down and then say to ourselves, well, where, where are we between the graduations? We're going to estimate where this index line here is between, in this case, the seventh and eighth graduation on the thimble. So that line is somewhere in between. Now it looks to my eye that I happen to stop at this time about halfway between the seven and the eight. So I would say that that's five tenths. And then what we can do is rotate this and then look at the vernier and we see, in fact, that on the vernier, the five tenths line lines up best. And so we were successful there in reading between the lines. All right, you might be thinking it's easier to read halfway through. Let's pick something a little bit harder here. All right, so let's grab that spot right there. All right, again, just randomly picking a spot. Now we're asking, where does this line hit between the four and the five here? Well, it looks to me that, of course, we're way past half. Maybe we're about three quarters. I'm gonna say it looks like 0.7 or 7 tenths. All right, so now we rotate over here and we look and then sure enough, there's a 7 tenth line that lines up best on the vernier. So in both those cases, simply reading between the lines here, we're able to check ourselves and how well we can do that by using the vernier on this one. Which means that we can do the same thing on this one here. We can read to a tenth, just like that mill standard from 1950 told us that we could do. We can do this same experiment with the digital micrometer if you happen to have the type that has both analog and digital readout. Since the digital mic can read to 50 millionths of an inch, you can do this test with even greater accuracy. The only hitch is that you have to carefully set the digital zero. Let me show you how. All right, so here we have a digital micrometer that also has the analog scale that you could read. So you could use this either way. And what we wanna do is line up a line that's on the thimble very closely in line with the index line on the sleeve. And then we want to set zero there, like I've done already. So that line is lined up, so we've set a really good zero. Now I'm going to start to rotate the thimble, and of course you see the digital readout changing, but we're just wanting again to test ourselves at how well we can read between lines. And so as I see here, if I look at the lines on the thimble, right now I'm about halfway between the two graduation lines and you see on the digital readout, it says the same thing, five tenths, or halfway between those. If I rotate a little bit more, and I say, all right, well, 
You know, if I don't look here and just sort of estimate here, I could guess how far I am away and then check myself by looking at the digital readout. So on a vernier, you can test yourself. On a digital one, another way to test yourself to see how well you can read between the lines on the thimble graduations. When we're calibrating micrometers and trying to decide if they are in or out of tolerance, there's another very powerful trick that you need to know for mechanical mics. I don't know if this works for all micrometers, but it does for Meditoria models. The width of the scale lines on the sleeve and the thimble are specifically designed to help you make higher accuracy measurements without having to read between the lines. Let me show you what that looks like. So imagine this being the index line and this being one of the scale marks on the thimble. The width of the scale lines are equivalent to two microns when you're measuring. And so you can measure errors during the calibration of just one or two microns by looking at the amount of overlap between the index line on the sleeve and the scale line on the thimble. When they look like this, about 50% overlap, that's equal to about plus one microns. If they're right on the edge of each other, like shown here, that's plus two microns. And when you start to see a gap forming between the two lines, you know that it's more than two microns, which happens to be the Meditoria tolerance for many of the smaller size micrometers. So in calibration, in many cases, you don't have to read between the lines. You can just look to see if a gap is forming or not between the index line and one of the graduations on the thimble. No gap, it's intolerance. That's a pretty useful trick when trying to check a tolerance of two microns or one ten thousandths of an inch. Not unlike the old Mill Standard 120, this little trick has been published in Meditoria literature for decades. But with the popularity of digital tools, it seems many people have forgotten about it. I find it to be pretty cool that documents published in 1950 are still teaching us things today. Thank you, I'm Jim Salisbury, and I'll see you next time from the Metrology Training Lab.